Hey friends, Miss Cassie here with Soul and Public Library's Digital Storytime. This month we are talking about all different kinds of pets. And this week we're gonna talk about two different kinds of pets. Pets that fly and pets that swim. But first we need to sing our welcome song and we need to get our clapping hands ready. We're gonna wiggle our fingers and shake our hands and rub them together really fast, really fast, really fast and put them on our knees. All right, here we go. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, clap your hands. What do we do after we clap our hands? That's right, we stomp our feet. If you wanna read a book, stomp your feet. If you wanna read a book, stomp your feet. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, stomp your feet. What do we do after we stomp our feet? That's right, we twirl around. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, twirl around. Okay, for our last verse, we're gonna be as quiet as we can. And we're gonna whisper, hooray. If you wanna read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. If you wanna read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. If you wanna read a book, have a seat and take a look. If you wanna read a book, whisper hooray, hooray. This month our theme song is Can You? And we're gonna do some different actions like some of the animals whose pictures you see here in our song. Are you ready? Great, let's go. Can you hop like a rabbit, wag your tail like a dog? Can you run like a hamster, stretch like a lizard on a log? Can you fly like a bird? Can you swim like a fish? Can you sit back down and be still like this? Great job, friends. Our first book today is Gilbert Goldfish Wants a Pet. It's written by Kelly DiPuccio and illustrated by Bob Shea. Now you might recognize Bob Shea. He has written and illustrated a lot of books like Dinosaur vs. Bedtime. <laughs> so if you like the pictures in this book, think about checking out some other Bob Shea books too. <sighs> to any outsider, Gilbert had everything a goldfish could ever want. A magnificent stone castle, a treasure chest full of gold, and a feast of tasty flakes that fell from the sky just in time for breakfast each day. But the one thing Gilbert did not have was the very thing he most desperately wanted. What do you think he most desperately wanted? That's right, a pet. <laughs> Sometimes he imagined his pet would be small. What kind of animal is he thinking about as a small pet? That's right, a ladybug, just a very small, tiny pet. Sometimes his pet would be big. What big pet is he imagining? 
That's right, a horse. And he's riding the horse in his goldfish bowl. And sometimes his pet was really big. <laughs> What's the really big imaginary pet? An elephant. That would be a very big pet for anyone to have, right? But especially <laughs> a goldfish, because goldfish are a lot smaller than elephants. Sometimes Gilbert imagined his pet would have fur like a bear, or feathers, like a pelican, or floppy ears, like a bunny. We read about those last week, didn't we? But every day and always, Gilbert imagined what it would be like to have a pet to care for and love. Aww. Sounds like Gilbert is maybe a little bit lonely, huh? Then one day, Gilbert woke up to find a dog barking at him. Bark, bark, bark. Gilbert blinked his eyes to make sure he wasn't dreaming. The dog wagged his tail and licked Gilbert's bowl. Aww. Gilbert swam around in happy circles and the dog ran around and around in happy circles too. A pet, Gilbert gloved. I have a pet. Aw, they seem like a good pair, don't they? But the dog barked and barked and barked some more. Bark, bark, bark. Gilbert never dreamed his pet would be so noisy. <laughs> or so thirsty. Oh no, what is the dog doing? Drinking out of Gilbert's bowl. That's not what that bowl of water is for. <laughs> A week passed. A very tired Gilbert woke up and the barky bark dog was gone. The castle was quiet again and Gilbert was just a teensy bit relieved. So what happened with the dog? Yeah, it looks like they were maybe just dog sitting that dog and now he went back to his family, right? So phew, Gilbert really dodged a bullet on that one, right? Just a visiting pet. A few days later, Gilbert noticed a small gray mouse peering at him through the glass. Gilbert's little fishy heart went Pitter patter swish. The mouse licked her paws and sniffed the bowl. Gilbert swam around and around in happy circles. And the mouse, who thought Gilbert was a large chunk of cheddar cheese, <laughs> ran around and around in circles too. A pet, Gilbert gloved happily. I have a quiet pet. The mouse sniffed and sniffed and sniffed some more. When the hungry mouse determined that Gilbert was not, in fact, a block of cheese, she ran away and she never came back. Gilbert's little fishy heart went pitter patter plop. Oh, how do you think Gilbert is feeling right now? Yeah, sad, maybe a little discouraged, right? He's thought twice now that he has a pet of his own and it didn't work out. That can be discouraging. More time passed and Gilbert had just about given up on his dream when a fly landed on the rim of his bowl. <gasps> well, hello there, little fellow, Gilbert called out cheerfully. The fly, the startled fly buzzed around in circles. Buzz, buzz, buzz. Gilbert jumped up and the wide-eyed fly was there to greet him in mid-air. Maybe this little pet is the right fit for Gilbert. A pet, Gilbert gloved. I have a quiet, friendly, <gasps> thwack. What happened? 
that's a fly swatter. That fly got swatted. Oh my, poor fly and poor Gilbert. He cried enough tears to fill a 10 gallon aquarium. Hmm. How do you think he's feeling now? Very, very sad, isn't he? In the morning, Gilbert opened his eyes. Somebody was watching him. Gilbert gulped. Somebody flicked its long tail and wiry whiskers. Gilbert cautiously swam around and around in circles. And somebody followed. Hmm, what kind of pet do you think this is? Hmm, I have a guess. Do you have a guess? Gilbert jumped. Somebody jumped too. Hmm, Gilbert thought, eyeing the curious new creature before him. Not too loud, not too rude, and not too squished. A pet, Gilbert gloved. I have the perfect pet. You look kind of hungry, Gilbert said. Would you like to join me for breakfast? The creature moved in closer and closer and closer. And then it took a big bite of green delicious flakes. The pink ones are really good too, Gilbert said with a smile. <laughs> So what kind of pet is this? Well, what kind of pet did you think it was going to be? I thought it was going to be a cat. Is that what you thought? With the ears and the whiskers, right? But what is it instead? It's a cat fish. <laughs> Would you like me to show you around the castle? Now Gilbert really does have everything a goldfish could ever want, including a pet. And what did he name his pet? Fluffy. <laughs> the end. Can you think of a better pet for a goldfish than a catfish? Me neither. I think it looks like the perfect fit. Gilbert thought a lot about different kinds of pets that he might like to have. So we're gonna sing a song called, I Have a Pet. <laughs> and we are going to um, sing about lots of different kinds of pets. Now this song is a call and response song. So that means I'm gonna sing a line and then you are gonna repeat it back to me. For example, the first two lines of our song are, I have a pet. And then you sing back. When I go like this, you sing back. I have a pet. Just like that. So our first verse, we're gonna sing about this pet. What kind of pet is this? That's right, it's a dog. So here we go with our song. I have a pet. Yes, I do. It is a dog. How about you? Good job. All right, I'm going to pick another pet and this time it's going to be a surprise. Are you ready? Okay, here we go. I have a pet. Yes, I do. It is a cat. <laughs> How about you? Good job. All right, here's another one. 
I have a pet. Yes, I do. It is a bird. How about you? Good job. All right, I'm going to do one more. Here we go. I have a pet. Yes, I do. It is a mouse. How about you? Yay! Good singing, friends. Our next book is about pet birds. <laughs> so we are going to do some fun bird actions. So the first action is we're going to flap like a pigeon. Can you flap your wings nice and big just like a pigeon flying in the air? Good job. Next we have stand like a flamingo. So you are going to stand on one foot and you're going to pick your other foot up. Can you balance on one foot just like a flamingo? All right, see if you can do the other foot. Can you switch feet? Yeah, just like a flamingo. Good job. Next, we're going to peck like a chicken. Can you peck like a chicken? <laughs> yeah, just like that. Good job. Ooh, this is a fun one. We're gonna shake our tails like a turkey. Can you shake your tail just like a turkey? Gobble, gobble. <laughs> Good job. And our last one, we're going to waddle like a duck. Have you ever seen a duck walk? They waddle like this. <laughs> and they're behind just goes back and forth with each step they take, <laughs> just like that. All right, I'm gonna mix up our action cards and we're gonna go through them all one more time. Here we go, we're going to peck like a chicken, peck like a chicken. You can even do some, <laughs> some wings with your chicken. Oh, and then we're gonna Waddle like a duck, waddle like a duck, back and forth, just like that. Perfect. Then we're going to flap like a pigeon, big wings, just like this. See how high and low you can get your wing flaps. Perfect. Okay, we're gonna shake our tails like a turkey. Can you shake your tail like a turkey? Just like that. Gobble, gobble. And last but not least, we're gonna stand like a flamingo. Just stand on one foot and pick your other foot up. See if you can balance. Good job. All right, we're gonna switch feet. So if you were standing on one foot, switch to the other foot. Excellent, just like that. Good job, birds. <laughs> Our last book today is called Curious About Birds. And we are gonna learn a little bit about what it might be like to have a pet bird. And this book is written by Jill Sherman. Why do pet birds sing? Tweet, trill, cheep, chirp. Wild birds sing to each other, right? You've heard birds outside sing or talk to each other, right? <laughs> birds may sing to defend their territory 
or find a mate. Pet birds sing to communicate too. They sing to their owner or other birds. Some birds have special songs to greet people. So they have a special song that says hello. And some birds just sing or whistle to show off. I didn't know that birds had different songs for different things, did you? Can all pet birds talk? Mm, no, only parrots can talk. They mimic human words. Mimic means copy. So if you say, hello, Polly, and then a parrot says, hello, Polly, they are copying what you just said. So you can't really have a conversation. They copy sounds that they hear often. Those sounds can be words, but they can also copy other birds, telephone ringing, or doorbells. <laughs> that would be confusing, wouldn't it? You think you hear ding dong for the doorbell, and you go and open the door and no one's there. And it's because your parrot was just making the doorbell song sound. <laughs> Why do pet birds click their beaks? Beak clicking, so, so taking their beak and going, right? Beak clicking means your bird is content. That means happy with how things are. Birds make this noise by snapping their beaks closed with each breath. They do it because they are happy. A pet bird might also click its beak to ask to be held. Oh, that's cute. And did you know that birds can wag their tails just like dogs? And it also means that they are happy. That sounds pretty cute, don't you think? A little bird wagging its tail. <laughs> Let's see. Ooh. Do pet birds get bored? Yes. Pet birds are very smart and social. Social means that they like to spend time with other birds or other animals. So they get bored if they're ignored. They need toys to keep busy. Some birds like food puzzles and it's good to keep it exciting. Swap in new toys every so often. Spend time with your bird and hold it every day. You can even teach it tricks. That sounds like that could be fun. Can I pet my bird? It depends on the bird. Some don't mind a gentle pet. Parrots like head scratches. But some birds don't like being touched. They just want to be around you. Others may not be used to your touch. If a bird wants a pet, it will bow its head toward you. And that means scratch here, please. <laughs> that sounds like a dog or a cat, doesn't it? Can a bird be let out of its cage? Yes, birds love to be out of their cages. They can stretch their wings. You are a part of your bird's flock. Get to know your bird. Just make sure all the outside doors and windows are closed. Pet birds shouldn't be let outside because they could fly away and get lost. How do I know if my bird is upset? That's a great question, right? We know how to tell if the bird is happy. How do we know if our birds, our pet birds are happy? They can click their beaks, right? Or wag their tails. They can bow their heads for some head scratches, but birds can get upset too. And it's important to know how to tell if your pet bird is upset. Are its feathers ruffled, right? Are they all kind of sticking up? Is its tail flared or spread out? 
Are its pupils small? That's the black part of the eye. Are they, did they get very small? These are signs that a bird is scared or angry. Be careful, it might bite. Birds like routine. Keep your bird happy by sticking to a schedule. Feed them at a set time, and when you are away, give them a toy to play with. If you want to find out more about what it might be like to have a pet bird, you can check this book out. There's some questions we didn't read, and there's some additional information at the back of the book for uh, places you can go to get even more information if you think that a pet bird might be a good pet for you. This is the end of our story time this week, friends. <laughs> so that means it's time for our goodbye song. But before we sing together, we want to say a special thank you to the Solon Women's Club. <laughs> they are sponsoring our story times during the month of March this year. And we are so lucky to have their support. The Solon Women's Club started the very first public library in Solon, and they still support the public library and the school libraries to make sure that there are books and library access for everyone who wants it. So big thank you to the Solon Women's Club for supporting this program where we can bring story time to you in the safety of your own home. But now it is time for us to sing our goodbye song. We read a book, then we played a game, then we sang a song together. We read a book and we played a game. We had a fun adventure. Now go read a book and go play a game and sing a little tune. Go read a book and go play a game. We'll see you back here soon.